here. Another two-player map. Another two-player map. Do you think we're going to see Mech again? I think we are. He's already shown it in two games. He showed a great Mech play on Terraform. Even though he ended up losing with it, I think he's going to try one more time. Echo is not a bad map for it either, so I would not be surprised. All right. These players are in the lobby. They're ready. The winner will move on to face Classic, the champion of last season of Star League in the winner's match. The map is loading. Let's jump into game number three, ladies and gentlemen. Terran player in red at the top of the map is TY. Showing a lot of mech today. As is a lot of Terrans these days. They've really you know, figured out what is powerful in this matchup, in the late games especially. Down here in the bottom right, we do have the Zerg player in blue. He is rogue. Going damn late game against it. Such an impressive bank. I'm um, good. I'm sorry to do this to you. I'm going to pull a bit of a Kanata. That game was 50 minutes long. I have to run to the bathroom really quick. Also, I've got problems on my monitor, so I'm going to run by the production room and fix that really quick. So no be problem. the hero I know you can be. I'll be right back. I'll be the, uh, I'll be the solo caster this time around, Wolf. Uh, here we go, guys. Starting things off, we are actually seeing Rogue go for that early scout. He doesn't want to get cheesed out this game, afraid of those proxies. I haven't really seen that style from uh, TY at all. He's very comfortable. He's taking a late game. Going for that mech composition. And he's going to actually go for the drone scout with it too. He's going to actually be scouting out that command center first. So, going to be able to apply the pressure. Stop the SCV from uh, building it for just a little while. And it's actually going to give him the option to go for double hatchery before pool if he wants to. It's kind of a almost a stylistic thing. A lot of players, you know, some players decide to. Some players aren't comfortable with it. Let's see what exactly Rogue wants to do. Considering he is going to be up against the mech composition once again, maybe he's inclined to simply just go for that greed, and it looks like we are going to see that as that third hatchery goes down before a spawning pool. So nice greedy opening for Rogue this time around. He wants to be in a very good place, and he, I'm sure he's got his mind on the fact that mech is a very real option at this point. He cannot let it go by. He cannot, he cannot underestimate it. We haven't really seen him try and be aggressive with it at all. But maybe this time, maybe this time you'll want to go for, you know, we do see a lot of Zerg players who are a little bit more aggressive, go for muters into that road switch, go for this timing to try and cut the head off the, the mech before it really begins, disrupt the production, stop it before they get that ideal composition that can kind of deal with everything on three and four bases. But uh, it doesn't seem like Rogue really wants to do that. It's more of a life sort of style of dealing with it, more of a be all you have seen a lot of. STV is going to get a scout of exactly what the build order is, but this timing on that third hatchery as well. So they, okay, you went double hatch before pool. So both players kind of understand at this point, we both have a lot of time on our hands before any aggression comes our way. We can sit back, focus on the macro, don't have to worry too much about any sort of harassment. And it's kind of a, it's a nice place to be if you want to be that kind of uh, player where you are greedy to that point. This means a lot of droning, a lot of macroing, a lot of efficiency and mechanics. We have to have Wolf back now. Welcome back, friend. Thank you. Sorry about that. Oh my god, my, I sit down and my monitor dies again. Is this real life? It must be uh, the cord that you are stepping on. It's it's plugged in. It just keeps losing signal, which is the cable is like nowhere near where I, my foot is for I, that. Well you, I don't know. You might want to try replug it, my friend. Don't worry. I'll can, uh, please continue to I'll carry this cast. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, well, okay, I, I pushed it in pretty hard. I think it's good now. All right. All right, sorry well, about that, guys. No problem. Wolf. Welcome back. It's been a bit of a uh, slow start to start things off. Both players choosing full economic mode right now. You did see Rogue go for the early scouts. Scouted this command center first, so he went double hatch before pool as the counter. And it looks like this time around, we are actually going to see a mind drop again from TY, maybe bringing it back to game one once to apply the aggression early. Now that Rogue might be in a more of a, a sense to 
to be a little bit e more economic and greedy and maybe take a little bit more risks in, in that way. Sure. We see Rogue making a ton of lings right now. This is exactly the same uh, it went first game, you know. Two Hellions looking for that run by, looking for the harass on drones, but Rogue making a lot of lings this time. Yep, so we do see... Uh, actually, wow, he's going up to... I think this is going to be an attack, man. He's got a Baneling Nest on the way. Oh, I like this, actually. Yeah, Ling Bane could be a great choice for this map, considering how much, how many shortcuts TY has taken to, how many Hellions he's invested into and nothing else. You know, a couple of mines have been made, but they're looking for a drop. And there it goes. There's nothing at home besides Hellions to defend against this. You know, I think uh, this is the first time, and I'm really excited about this. I think this is the first time I've ever seen Rogue like adapt in a series like this. He's normally much better at best of ones. Oh, he saw so many Lings down. He knows exactly what's going on. All right. Bailing that's still not done yet, though, so this gives him more time. You might have sent, uh, you might have made the bailing that's just simply too late. It is very late. Mines are going to be in position here. Medivac's going to be scouting for this as well. And wants to trigger those mines with a few lings here. So important if he triggers these mines. And he triggers one. Big mistake from TY not to to, to cancel it. Yeah. yeah. The second one is back there to the left. He might not see that. Okay. This is an evacuation oh, here. This wow. is smart. This is usually the best way to deal with a big all-in like this. This is so early, too. Like, he's actually going to be in a great place to defend against this. Here oh, man. Go. Here's a Widow Mine. Oh, it doesn't go off. It's going to hit a huge wave of Ling, so and a Bane Ling. A great shot there. Needs to just continue to kite those Hellions back. Ling going to have a hard time going oh, up here. Oh, no. This is a terrible idea. Oh, my goodness. That is exactly what you don't want to do. GG. GG. Wow. Oh, oh my just god. Just like that. Unbelievable ending to such a great series. Oh, I'm so sad, man. Not that, not that uh, TY won, but just simply because that series ended in such a way. Really? Oh. Yeah, I mean, he, he went for that all-in. Frustrating way to lose after going the distance in game two against that kind of mech style. Such an, such an, I just want to say it's so unlike Rogue to do something like that. It was a great plan until it got scattered. If those Hellions didn't see all those links and that Medivac came back with the Widow Mines, Great opportunity there. And the, the bailing nest was so late too, so it gave him further, even more time to get ready. Yeah, well, oh well. Unfortunate ending there, but uh, I guess it happens if, you, if your only doesn't work out the way it's planned. Such a shame. Well, that's it, man. TY's going to face Classic in the winner's match. Now, this is really cool because we saw these two players play in Pro League in the Telecom Wars just on Tuesday. So it's going to be a bit of a rematch here. The winner, of course, will move on to the round of 16. That's right. Or rather, the round of 8, excuse me. So look forward to that. Tell your friends. We've got the champion here against TY coming up after this commercial break.